right now. At the end of 20 years, that's $296,537. 20 years of no car payments. Oh, what would I drive? <laughs> 20 years of no credit card payments. At the end of 30 years, that's $734,000.75. Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying that a lot of times as believers, when we cry out to God, bless me, bless me, bless me, what we're really crying out to God is, God, let me win the lottery. <laughs> That's what we really mean. Because God is saying, I'm blessing you above and beyond all that you can ever ask, think, or imagine. But because you're not storing it, because you're not managing it well, it's going right through your hands. You know, we look at people that are millionaires and we say, wow. Do you know if you really added up all the money you make over your career, you've made more than a million dollars? But it's up to us to steward all that God has for us. I'm going to blow through these for the sake of time, but here are just eight steps to be able to steward the finances that God has given me. Eight steps, and I'm going to throw them out quickly. The first one is this. Make a budget. Make a budget. Everything you earn, everything you spend on paper at the beginning of the month. Before you run into your month, say, this is what I'm going to bring in. This is what my bills are, and this is where I'm going. So at the end of the month, you're not saying, I don't know where that went. Has that ever happened to you? That used to happen to me all the time. I know I work. <laughs> I know I got paid, but for some reason, I just don't know where it went. You <laughs> You know, sometimes we're just, if you know somebody who doesn't know what they do with their money, would you give them yours to hold on? Come on now. That's common sense, right? But we don't know where ours goes, but we ask God, give us the resources of heaven. God says, I'm not giving you squat because I need to know where it's going. Make a budget. Say, hey, this, this is how I'm going to. And, and here's the thing. Don't make some fantasy budget. <laughs> make a reality budget. They have three kids. I have a husband. This is what it's going to cost to feed them for this month. This is how much gas. This is, this is the, the, the credit card bill. This is the cable bill. Put it in a budget. And it can't be one for every single month because different things come up different months. But make a budget. The second thing is this. Save for small emergencies. <laughs> Someone said the second thing is stick to the budget. <laughs> that goes without saying. The second thing is this, save for small emergencies. Your first priority should be to have at least a thousand or two thousand dollars in an account somewhere that you do not touch. So that when your tire blows out on your car, your, your whole life doesn't go up in smoke. <laughs> but that is just an inconvenience that you're able to handle. Amen. Third thing is this, and this is my favorite one. Get out of debt. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. Get out of debt. And this is how you do that. Take all your debts and list them smallest to largest. Take all your debts, list them smallest to largest. And whatever money you have left over at the end of your budget, put all of that money towards that smallest debt. You may have one of 20000 one of 10000 one of 5000 then why of $500? Just attack the one of $500. Pay the minimum for everything, but attack the one for $500. That means no more Olive Garden. <laughs> that means you can't go out to eat every Sunday. That means you're kind of pulling back on your living. Just attack that smallest one. And when you wipe out that smallest one, take the payment from the smallest one, take the extra money, and put it all towards the next largest one. And before you know it, the payments that you're making to one debt is going to increase and increase and increase. And you're going to begin to chop them down quickly and quickly. And before you know it, you will be debt free. Amen. Amen. The fourth thing is this. Save. Save. Proverbs 21.20 says this. In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. The Bible says, that's what God's word says. God's word says that if you spend, if you, I'm not going to throw out a certain car, but if you have a really, really, really nice car and you have no money in your account, the Bible calls you a fool. Oh, I shouldn't talk about it because there might be someone in here. But <laughs> I drive in certain places 
and I see cars that are worth more than my house. And I say, how in the world do you have that park there? <laughs> anyway, the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 7, and I'm paraphrasing. I'm actually going to turn there for you so that you can hear this one. Proverbs 13, 7 says this, a man pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. A man pretends to be rich, but has nothing. A man pretends to be poor, but has great wealth. Let me give you a, a different definition or a different paradigm of, of what wealth or being rich is. Wealth is not living in the biggest house, driving the best car, having the most expensive jewelry. Wealth is being able to be unemployed for three, four years and have no problem at all because you have that much stashed somewhere that you can just live off of what God has blessed you with. There are people that are making millions of dollars that if their job were to stop, they would stop too. <laughs> and we see that as wealthy, but that's the world's way. That's the world's paradigm of flaunting and flashing all that we have. And there's nothing wrong with, with having things, but it's important that we have more hidden and more stored than we have more exposed. It's important that we have more in here, come on now, than we project to other people. Hallelujah. Come on now, save. You should have at least, after you're debt free, you should have at least three to six months of income saved up. Yeah. How much do you make a month? You should save three to six times that. That way, if you want to switch jobs, if you lose jobs, you don't have to take the first one that comes. And you're not at McDonald's flicking burgers after you came out of some other job that was much more income. But you're able to wait and to see what you're looking for. Amen. You're not falling out on me, are you? Come on, Come on now. Stick with me. I'm going to both of the last one. Save. The fifth thing is this. Retirement, save for retirement, 15% of your income should go towards retirement. You should be saving for the rest of your life so that when you hit whatever age you hit, that you say, you know what, I just don't want to put up with this anymore. <laughs> that you don't have to put up with that anymore. And you can put your feet up and say, you know what, I'm going to give my life to building the kingdom of God. Six, save for your kids' college fund or save for big purchases, cars, houses. Seventh, pay off your home early. Eighth, build wealth and give like no one else. Yeah. Come to a place where you say, you know what? I have enough stashed aside. I've taken care of things so that I can truly begin to be a blessing to other people. I'm, I'm not going to jump into this too much because we'll talk about it next week. But do you know that if you bless other people and you yourselves are not blessed, that you're not really being a blessing to other people? It, you know, there's certain people that are just naturally generous. We're, we just love to give people things. And what we do is we give out of our lack. And you know what that does? That means both of us are out of luck. And that means you can never come back to me again because we are now scratching together. No, the Bible says build your own house. Take the plank out of your eye so that then you're able to be a blessing to others, but a continual blessing to others. And all that for the last point, and we're out of here. Desire true riches. Desire true riches. Church, I'm over time. Can you guys give me an extra five minutes? Is that okay? I was, I was going to take it anyway, but I was just going to ask you guys. This is the most important one, though. Luke chapter 16, verse 11 says this. So if you have been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? If you have not been trustworthy with handling true wealth, who will trust you with true riches? This is the entire shift of the paradigm. And this may be something that you've never heard before, but this is what God is saying. That the life that I've given you, that the money that I've entrusted you with is nothing more than a test to see if you can be trusted with something valuable. I don't know if you have any children, but, you know, when, when we, we had a big family and we used to do dishes and when the dishes were done, they, they would dry them up. And the youngest people would just get the forks 
because if they dropped the forks, it was no big deal. You know, just pick the fork up, wash it off, and put it away. And the more you handled the forks, then you would move up to the plates. And it wasn't until you had taken care of all that that they would hand you the fine china and trust you in taking care of that because you've proven that you can take care of the little things. Do you know, because we've so bought into the world system, finances are the biggest thing in our world. That's what our entire election is on right now. People just want to know, what are you going to do about the economy? That is the biggest stress in our life. But God's saying, hold on. I come from heaven where there is no lack, and I could provide for everything that you need. There's more to finances than just being able to pay for things. It's a test to see if you can be trusted with true riches. Do you know what true riches are? True riches are the souls of man. God is looking how we are managing our finances to see if we can be entrusted in leading other people into the kingdom of God. Let me, let me read this one verse to you and then I'm going to let you go. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30 says this, the fruit of righteousness is a tree of life and he who wins souls is wise. Do you want to know what the purpose that God has for you, what God created you for? God created you that when you spend your life here, when you live it to the max, when you do all that God has called you to do, when you step into heaven and say, God, I've done all that you've called me to do, that you don't just step in by yourself, but there are 10 20, 30, 40 people following you into glory saying, God, this is what I poured my life into. I knew that finances weren't going to follow me up here. I knew that my degrees weren't going to follow me up here. But God, I invested in something that can last throughout eternity. And you know, it may not make sense to you, but God is looking at our lives. And if we're not managing something as simple as finances, God is saying that I can't send that person into your life that's hurting, that needs a savior, that needs God, because I can't trust you to steward their life. I don't know if you've been connected to someone who just came into Christ, or maybe you just came into Christ, but it takes attention. It takes care. It takes perseverance. It takes encouragement. It takes speaking life into that person to see them accomplish all that God has called them to accomplish.